Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tanisha Davis. This is Fun and Budget. And in today's video, we're going to go over my second paycheck budget in the month of February. Now, oh, the purpose of these videos is for us just to be accountable with our money, um, to make good money decisions, to stay on top of making our decisions in the now, as well as share with you guys my process of what I do when I get paid. Let's go. The first thing I do is I open up every dollar, my every dollar app on the computer, and then I also open up my bank account where my paycheck is deposited okay so when we take a look at this paycheck what we notice is that the amount is not my paycheck it is what is in my checking account at the time that I got paid this is what we're working with okay one of the things that I do is I just go over transactions to make sure that everything is legit and that nothing left my bank account that I didn't know about okay and here we see that I transferred some money around. I also paid a few things and I got my ATM surcharge rebate. Now what this tells us is I really don't go to the ATM that often because I really don't use cash that often, okay? So $2.50 was refunded back to me and that is because my bank is an online bank account. So whenever I use an ATM, that money is refunded up until up till a certain amount okay they don't they just don't refund into infinity i don't know i think it might be 12 dollars or so a month that they refund back so after that the next thing that i do is i go and i check my credit cards this is my second paycheck so my mortgage and stuff was paid out of my first paycheck okay so like always though i live a credit card lifestyle and what that simply means is that i try to pay everything that i can pay using my credit cards in exchange for points that i then will use in the future for travel and then when i get paid i actually pay off the balances of those cards so let's take a look the first thing we're going to look at is my city prestige card okay so we see here that the current balance is, is $1,157, okay? It says I have a minimum payment due of $35 on March 2nd, but y'all know we don't live by minimum payments. And also, if we look down here, we see that I have accumulated over 107,000 points. And that is the equivalent of $1,000, now what I will do is start looking at the transactions of the bank account to make sure that everything is things that I signed off on. And the first thing we're going to see is, well, the first thing I'm going to look at, just to remind you guys and myself, is the things that I'm not paying. Now, typically, I pay my entire balance, but some of you know that Tesla is supposed to reimburse me for some things. So those items I'm not paying and that right here is going to be the $30 uber fee and the $227 plane ticket down here we see about $420 for travel and that is for a down deposit we put on a trip um to Mexico and $210 of that a friend was paying and so I'm actually going to pay that this time this go round and everything else was already paid from this statement right here because you see that there was a $469 payment that was made and there was also a $229 payment that was made okay now if we look at things currently that I made that hadn't been paid since the last time we looked at this this is what we have right here we have about three dollars for McDonald's about fourteen dollars for keep your distance comedy tour and that was a virtual concert a virtual comedy show and I decided because I already paid for the app for Kev on stage which I paid $50 for the year I decided that I'm not going to further buy the keep your distance shows only because I really don't have time to watch them and yeah and unless there's just really a comedian that I really really want to see we're just going to go ahead and keep that money in our bank account okay about $21 went for um, Ethiopian food, about $3 for Chick-fil-A, another $4 for McDonald's, another $6 for Chick-fil-A. Do not judge me, okay? I do not. 
about $28 for Cooper's Hawk, about $4 for Starbucks. And then I actually went snowboarding um, last week and that came to $345. That was my part paying for lodging. And then that $7 was a gas station run on the way to go snowboarding. $224 was for my cell phone service. And another $17 was for food on the snowboard trips at Seven Springs. So that's what that Seven Springs is. It's Seven Springs, Pennsylvania. $5 for Google membership. Another dollar for Google membership. And $6 for Little Caesars. And again, snowboard trip. Out of all of this stuff, when I add up everything, I am going to send a $900 payment to Citibank, okay? When we subtract that $900 from the $6,537, this leaves us with $5,637. The next thing that I do is I go over to every dollar and I go ahead and I X out everything that I just paid for. Because once again, I keep this stuff tracked and logged in my Every Dollar app, but I don't show that it's paid until I actually pay off the credit card statement with my physical for real, for real money and not credit card money. Okay? Credit card money is not a thing. It's not a thing, guys. The next credit card that we're going to look at is Bank of America. Taking a look here, we see that I owe $728. And then we also see that I accumulated 84,277 points. So that's about $800 of points. Let's start from the top. $49 for vidIQ, $397. And that is for tickets for Orlando, Florida for Disney World. $22 was spent at Target. $3 was spent on postage. And then I was refunded $14.33. Yo, this is why. Y'all, oh, Amazon. I ordered some stuff from Amazon. And I'm addicted. Well, I'm not addicted. I really like this mushroom coffee, right? And so I went to Amazon and I put in the name and I found the coffee that I wanted and I ordered it. I already have this coffee, so I know what it looks like. I know what it feels like. I know what it's supposed to be. What did I receive in the mail? Something that sounded like this. Does that sound like coffee to you? Does that sound like coffee to you? No, it doesn't. So this is what I got in the mail. Y'all see that? And I was highly upset because I'm like, what is this? It says Urchin One Herbal Supplement Extract Pills. 200 pills. Okay. So I try to go in and do a refund, like get my money back. And they're like, uh-uh, this can't be returned. And so I finally get on the phone and I speak to an Amazon representative. And then you see that they said that they'll refund me the money, which they did. But I tried to write a review because I felt like this was an old bait and switch. Because if you look at this barcode back here, you see that barcode? It says exactly what I ordered, the Four Sigmatic Mushroom Coffee. It says what I ordered. But this apparently, this ain't that. And then, to make matters worse, and you see this says new, it says Four Sigmatic Mushroom, blah, 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 blah. But this says Urchin Wan, right? And to make matters worse, I saw the top of this. And look at this warning. Y'all see that? Warning, cancer, birth defects, reproductive harm. What in the world? What in the world? And so I was like, I was highly upset because even when I call Amazon, Amazon, oh, you can just keep it and use it as you would like. What, what am I? What, what is this? What is this even for? And so then I had to do a Google because I'm like, what is Urchin Wan? It says, Urchin Wan is a grayish, brownish to yellowish brown pill used in traditional Chinese medicine to remove damp phlegm and regulate stomach function. It is used in cases where there is a cough with copious expiration, phlegm, sensation of stuffiness in the chest, and nausea, vomiting due to the stagnation of damp phlegm. What the heck? 
what the heck so that's what it says it is so i tried to do a review on this thing and y'all they rejected my review they said and oh, gosh i wish i wish i had a copy of my review because i don't even think they told me what i wrote here it is they do have it mm. But it doesn't show me the whole thing. But I gave it a one star. Because I just felt like this was an old bait and switch. $14 and this is what they sent me. Alright. So it says. Um, that, now mind you. I did some five star reviews. They take my five star reviews. But this is the second time they hadn't taken my one star review. Amazon. And I figure it's because Amazon is a business. And if they keep getting too many things with too many one star reviews. It prevents sales. And they get a percentage of anything that they're able to sell even through a third party. So it behooves them to make it look like they're a reputable site. And that you can trust them by limiting their ratio of one star to all the other star reviews. Right? So basically they said, thank you for submitting a customer review on Amazon. After carefully reviewing your submission, your review could not be posted to the website. While we re appreciate your time and comments, reviews must adhere to the following guidelines. And then they say, now my, uh, they say your review should focus on the specific features of the product and your experience with it. We do not allow profane or obscene content. Didn't do that. They said advertisements and professional material. Didn't do that. They said do not put URLs. I did not put a URL. They said any attempt to manipulate the community content or features, including contributed false or misleading or inauthentic content, is strictly prohibited. I wrote. And this is just the beginning of what I wrote because it's not showing me the whole thing. But I said, I ordered the, I ordered four schematic mushroom elixir sample pack, which I already use and am familiar with. What I received is Urchin Wand Herbal Supplement, a bottle of 200 pills. And the third picture, the backdrop shows what I was supposed to get, but the bottle is what I got. And then I had wrote about this warning and about the fact that I wasn't allowed to return it. And that I and then I wrote what I just told y'all right here that this sticker, this barcode does say the Four Sigmatic brand. It does, but what I received was something not. So they said, uh, uh, nope, no, you can't do this. And then I even wrote to the manufacturer about how I didn't receive what I ordered, and they said, oh, we changed our packaging, so it is what you ordered. This is not a change of packaging, y'all. This is not a change. This is a whole nother product. This is not coffee. This is not coffee. So anyways, that was that, guys. And so that's why they refunded me the $14.33. But I'm just like, good gracious. I just felt like it's just like this whole bait and switch thing. I feel like this needs to be addressed, especially with these very dangerous and severe side effects and warnings. Anyways, let's move on. Let's move on. Because y'all here to see about this paycheck, right? Okay. So, once again, we have a few things on this car that I'm not paying yet because we are um, waiting for Tesla to reimburse me some money. And that is this $43 parking. And this is this $170 towing fee. Everything else was paid. So, on Bank of America, this go round, we will be paying $564 dollars when i subtract that from our previous balance we have five thousand and seventy three dollars remaining then we're going to go over to every dollar and we are going to make sure that we x out the things that we just paid for off of our every dollar what do you call it budget yeah budget the last credit card we're going to take a look at is our american express card okay we have a $268, $269 balance, okay? We're going to take a look at everything that we owe. So we have about 30,000 points on this card. And as y'all see, this is like my least used card. So 30,000 points is the equivalent of $30, which is fine because um, no matter how many points you have, you can also subtract that off of a balance. So if I wanted to buy a plane ticket, I can subtract $30 off of that plane ticket. And these things can also be used for gift cards. So we see that we have $109 insurance. That's for my car insurance. I have $12 for YouTube Red. 
and I spent $19 at the grocery store at Giant. And then I also spent $23 at Sprouts grocery store. And then $35 for gas. And once again, that was for our car trip to going to Seven Springs to snowboard. And so this right here means I'm going to pay this full balance of $269. When I subtract that, I have $4,804 remaining. We're going to hop on over to every dollar and we're going to make sure that we zero out these things because they are accounted for and tracked in my every dollar app. Each item. Every time I spend a dollar, I make sure I track it. If it's not already pre-thought out, I make sure I go in and adjust my um, budget for the month to include these things. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and look through every dollar and see what else it is that I can pay. And right now I see that I have a $59 Capital One fee. Now Capital One is my longest line of credit. So I tend to keep it around. I don't use it, but there is an annual fee of $59. So I just go ahead and pay that. And when I subtract that, we have $4,745. And then I'm also going to take this time to go ahead and pay my utility bills. So I'm going to pay my electricity bill for $154 using a credit card. I'm going to pay my gas bill for $131 and my cable bill, the internet bill for $85, all using my credit cards. I'm not going to zero those things out in every dollar showing that I paid them. But what I am going to do is annotate the date that I made my payment using a credit card. Once this shows up on my credit card statement, I will then pay that balance off and then I will go back into every dollar and zero it out showing that I paid it. But as you see, well actually you don't see, let me take a thing. Okay, so this is how it will look. You will see that I pay my $131 gas bill and then I annotate in my notes that I paid this on February 18th using my Bank of America card. The same thing with my electricity bill, the same thing with the internet, okay? And once I go in and I make those payments, I then will, will zero those out by showing that those payments were made. Because by the end of the month, everything here should reflect remaining should be zero. So that's how I do that right there. And that's how I, I balance it with paying with using credit cards and incorporating what I spend on my credit cards in with my budget. That way we know that we're never spending more than we actually have. At this top left hand corner we see that for the month of February I have $282 left to budget. So that means that if I was to buy anything outside of what I already budgeted in my budget it can't be more than $282 because I don't have it. And then if I do choose to buy something which I actually am because one of these days soon I need to go to the store and I need to buy a whole new camera. A whole new one of y'all because you tripping Canon. Um, I've had this camera forever and I use it a lot. So I definitely have gotten my money's worth. But before I go on my next trip, I definitely want to buy a new camera. So I'm going to do that. And so as we see, I only have $282 in this budget. A camera is going to cost us a good seven, dollars $800, right? But what I'll do then is get it from my savings. And then I can move the money from my savings and show it in this budget by saying, I added X amount of money to, my, to this to make this. Or if I wanted to, which I'm probably not going to do. But... I guess I could. It's the same thing. When I look at the money that I set aside to go to savings, I don't have to put that in savings. I have a good $750 set aside to go to savings. I don't have to move that stuff to savings. I can just use that stuff to buy my camera and it's all good being that it's all coming from the same place anyway. My bank account. Um. So yeah, so that's what I'm going to do right there. And then let me see anything else. I'm going to look through every dollar and see if there's anything else that I can pay that's not attached to a credit card. And there isn't. You already know that I wait to the very end of the month to do the things like move my money from my checking account to my savings. I wait to the end of the month to do things like give away whatever I'm going to give away to whoever I said I was going to give it away to in the name of giving. Um, and then the money that I am setting aside for my mortgage that stays in my bank account 
until I make my first payment of the next month. That way we always have a cushion in my account and I'm never having to rob Peter to pay Paul or move too many things around. Like for instance, I didn't move the money to my savings. So if I did want to use that for my camera, the money is still there. And once I make that camera purchase using a credit card, the money is still in my account to go ahead and pay that credit card off. And if I didn't have the money in my account, I will move the money from a savings account to my checking account to make that thing and pay it off. Because once again, I save money. I save money. And I don't necessarily call it an emergency fund. I call it it's money I save to do what I want to do with. And I'm not reckless because I'm more of a saver than a spender. So I'm comfortable in that regards. But that's it, guys. That is it. When we look at all of that and everything is said and done, we still have $4,745 left in the account. But so that's all. Thank y'all for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already a member of the Fab family. And talk to me in the comments below. Oh, and this hat, I actually got this hat at a Tesla event. So this is actually um, a picture of the Tesla truck, semi-truck. And I have a video on that. Tesla invited me to come out to that event because a lot of people have bought Teslas using my car, my code. Five people would have had to purchase Teslas to receive an invite. And so over five people at that time had purchased Teslas and I received an invite. And it was such an awesome event. And of course, my road dog Gwen went with me. We were like last minute hopping on planes to LA and um, we made it happen and we really were one of the few chocolate people in the room and maybe even the only black women in the room but yeah i think i can count on one hand the other brown people black people who were there so that was um a very interesting experience so if you haven't seen that video eye in the sky check it out it was a good time all right talk to you guys in the next video peace